Hey guys, welcome back to Compound Interest. This is Maverick. Um, I apologize for my voice today. My I sound a little nasally because my kids have been sick, and then also I want to apologize for the uh, video quality. I wanted to film my screen and me at the same time so I could go through these results with you. So what we're talking about today is the the quiz that I had all of you take. Um, and we're going to go through question by question. So stay tuned for this quick disclaimer, and we'll get right into it. I'm on my own, broken alone. I feel the rain crashing down. All around this empty town. I'm searching for the lost and found. But you don't care, you're unaware. Keep moving like the scars aren't even there. All right. Hey guys, welcome back. This is Maverick. So we're going to get into this. This is going to be a pretty short video today. Um, let me shrink my screen in here and pull this up. Um, we're going to talk about the results from the quiz. So let's just jump right into it. Um, oh, also, I wanted to let you know that I did not, I did not forget the scotch. I never forget the scotch. Mm. Like you guys know, if you, uh, you hit that like button, I drink scotch. All right, so let's get into it. So I had a grand total of eight questions that I had. This was a very short survey, and it might seem kind of skewed just because with uh, 18 subscribers, you're not going to get a lot of people respond. So I am going to do another, another financial survey again um, when I have more people. So this is kind of skewed. A lot of it's my close family and friends. Um, my, you know, my in-laws work for a bank, my, my parents are retired. So the, these results are going to be probably a little bit skewed, but let's go through them together and see what we got. All right. So as you can see right here, the first question, how many months of expenses should you have saved for your emergency fund? And we had a tie at three to six months and six to nine months. And what financial planners and advisors say is right here, it's B. Three to six months expenses you should have at minimum. If you have six to nine months, you're doing really well. And if you have nine months to a year, you are freaking killing it. So that's question number one. And the reason why you should have three to six months is because typically that is a transitional point for people. If you lose your job or something major happens, um, it typically on average takes someone about, you know, anywhere from one to three months to find a job. So having three to six months just in case something major happens or a health issue is very, very important. All right. So number two, how much income should you be saving for retirement? Now, most of the people got this right. Uh, experts believe it should be 15 percent. Some people said 10 percent and some people said 19 uh, percent. And then there were people that I had right in below. You can't see that here, but there are two people that wrote in like uh, like 13, 14, 12 percent like that, which is probably what they're saving. 10 percent is honestly not enough. And if you do the math and compound what you're probably getting, which is on average through the S&P anywhere from, you know, six to 12 percent um, and you're only making, you know, 50 to 100 K a year, 10 percent is not going to get you to retire on time. You're going to be working until you're 67, 70 years old. At least it's going to take you forever. 15%, in my opinion, is what everybody suggests. I personally do not think it's enough. It should be at least a quarter of your income, if not more. And it's actually supposed to flip flop. When you're younger, you're supposed to save like 50% of your income. And then it's supposed to transition and switch. As you get older, you save less and less and invest less and less because you have more. Um, so the real answer to this question should be saving as much as you can. Saving something is better than nothing at always. And I think it's great that people recognize that they need to save. Okay, so question number three, how confident are you are being able to cover the cost of a $500 emergency? And this is where this, uh, this quiz gets a little skewed because, like I said, not very many people took it. And 100% of people said that they're very confident they have money left over, which is great because that means you're ahead of 40% of other Americans that don't have enough for a $500 emergency. And the same thing goes for the next question where how confident are you to be able to cover the cost of a $1,000 emergency? And 100% of you said they were very confident. So either you're lying because you don't want to admit that you don't have the money or you're just close people to me who... I know are are financially fit. Like I said, my in-laws work for for the bank for banking system, so they obviously have an idea of what saving and investing is and how important it is. 
And so, so these two questions are kind of skewed. Um, the facts go that there are 60 something percent. I, I showed it in my last video and I, I'll put a link to it right up somewhere in here that, uh, that there's like 60% of Americans that don't have enough for a thousand dollar emergency, which means majority of people are living paycheck to paycheck. And this, this scenario right here, um, would not play out well for them if something were to happen to them. This next one, um, number five, what's preventing you from saving and investing? And what's interesting about it, most people said that they were saving and investing. Um, I would, I should have worded this a little bit different because I'd like to know how much people are actually saving. If you're saving or investing a dollar, that's not going to do anything for you. But if you're saving and investing, you know, you know, half your income or 15% of your income, that would, then this would make sense. But there are some people that said that the idea of learning how to save and invest is intimidating. And that is something that I'm trying to get across here with my, my channel. And what I've been saying is that there are so many different financial vehicles the lingo is confusing and you don't know if the advisor that you're with has your best interest at heart, which is where I come in, which is why one of the reasons I started this channel is because I've gone through all the lingo. I've gotten my licensing before and I know how difficult this stuff can be. And my job is to help alleviate some of the pain with it and make it easy for people to learn. And so, so the fact that 13% of you said that, that tells me that you want to invest and maybe you're just putting money aside, but you don't know what to do yet, which is why I think you should stick with me. Um, and then <laughs> scary enough, someone said, it's not a priority right now. I'll save later when I make more money. That is not a good idea because when you wait until later and you have more money to try and save, you won't have enough time to save the money you need to retire, which means you'll be stuck working at Walmart or some other job. And so, the priority is to pay yourself first always. That's why it's best to at least participate in one of your company's programs. If you have something, have them draw it out before you get a chance to touch it. You got to protect, you got to protect your money from yourself. You are your worst enemy a lot of times when it comes to saving and investing. And so having it automated and integrated into your daily or monthly or weekly paycheck, however you get paid, is one of the best things to do to guarantee that you're going to have something saved for retirement so that's question number five and then question number six is how do you feel about your answers to the questions of the previous page most people said they feel pretty good about them hence by the answers of people being able to cover cost of emergency stuff there was um again 13 percent of you that said i started drinking i need to rethink my life so cheers to that but uh, yeah, so the majority of you got this, and, and I know, like I said, I know this is probably just a little bit skewed, um, and I'm going to do another one of these when I get more people, and it'll have a broader spectrum of different people. We'll get a better better result. So um, I think it's great that at least the people that did take the survey uh, have prioritized this stuff, and, and that makes me happy. And the majority of you were female, which is great. Um, over male and majority of people were 31 35 which is kind of my target audience um, there's not much advice I can give to all the all the boomers down here you guys are pretty much set in your ways and what you want to invest in so um, there's not much I can change some of you you know are even probably retired um, so sorry boomers I can't help you but anybody that's in this age down here that's my that's my target audience that's my goal um, so Again, I want to thank you for um, taking the survey. It really means a lot. Even if it was only a couple people, like I said, I really appreciate you taking the time to do that and to help out the channel and check us out. And I hope you maybe you learned something or maybe it opened your eyes something to something new that you didn't know before. And as always, if you could like and subscribe, um, I really appreciate that. It helps out the channel and the YouTube algorithm. And you know, when you hit the like button, I drink scotch. Oh, so good. Till next time, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.